is Rachel from Tiramar Farms and I wanted to talk to you today about how to find um, good hay, good quality hay for your livestock. Hay is going to be the cornerstone of 90% of your livestock's diet. Um, anything like sheep, goats, horses, um, cows, all of those types of animals are going to eat hay. Even pigs are going to eat a little bit of hay. Um, rabbits will eat hay. So basically any of your major livestock breeds are going to need hay. Um, and especially it's really important for the ruminant species like goats and cows to have plenty of hay because that roughage um, helps them ferment in their rumen. So that being said, how do you find good hay? Well, first of all, I would recommend finding a like particular hay guy as we call them or a couple of different people who you know consistently have good quality hay build a relationship with them and um, then purchase from them routinely so it's better to have a relationship with your um, hay provider than it is to try to find a new hay person each year because when you have that relationship they're going to know about how much hay you need you're going to be in touch with them and they'll be able to hold that back for you rather than you trying to go find it um, each year trying to find it through a different source um, because what will happen is all of the good sources will end up selling out and then you'll be stuck getting poor quality hay. After you find a good um, hay person that you're going to routinely buy from, how do you know that their hay is good? How do you find a good source of hay um, and know that the quality is great? So I have a couple of bales here. Um, these actually came from the same person, however the one, um, one of them is old. It's from um, an older cutting, I believe, last year, and we just didn't get it all fed, and so you can see how much the quality has degraded. And the other one is fresh from this year. Uh, it's a fresh cutting. So what you're looking for in good quality hay is this green color. You can see it's really green and fresh looking. Um, of course, it's not as green as fresh grass, um, but it is a lot better um, than this. This hay is, um, if you see a bale like this, you know it's either old or they dried it out too much um, in the harvest process or maybe it's just a poor type of forage. But you can see it's this dark, um, dark brown. There's hardly any green left in it because all of the, um, the green has faded away as it's aged. And as the green fades away, so does the nutritional content. So this is basically, if we were to feed this, um, this would just be basically pure roughage. It wouldn't really have very much nutrients to speak of at all because all of the green is gone. Um, now you may want to open up a bale as well for a couple of reasons. One reason is that if you have a bale um, that's on the outside where it's gotten sun exposure, if it's been sitting in a barn and the sun has been coming in on it, the outside will fade. Um, it will turn brown from the sun exposure but the inside may still be green. So if most of the bales look pretty green and you have a couple that are brown on the outside, maybe break one of those up and it may actually be green on the inside where the sun hasn't touched it. Um, so then that would still be okay. And the second reason is you do wanna check for weeds, particularly um, any kind of pokey weeds like foxtail where it can embed in the gums because it's prickly you don't want a whole lot of those types of weeds. A mixed grass is a great choice, um, especially if you live in an area like we do where we don't really have alfalfa hay. Um, what would be better for the goats when they're in milk and things like that would be alfalfa hay, but it doesn't grow in our climate, so we have to use alfalfa pellets, or um, like we can use chaff hay too. I don't usually use that because they don't eat it fast enough. But Around here, what we can find is a good quality either Bermuda grass hay or mixed grass hay, and either one of those would be okay. Um, you just don't want a lot of the weeds. You don't want a lot of stalks. If it has a lot of hard stalks in it, number one, the animals aren't going to eat that. And that also means that it got too tall probably before they harvested it. So you want to have mostly um, soft pieces like this. And also, you want to be sure um, that it doesn't have any toxic plants in it. So this would be something to ask your hay person, you know, is there a cherry tree in your hay field? Because, and the cat's coming to check it out. Um, if there's a hay field, or if there's a cherry tree in the hay field, cherry leaves are poisonous and you don't want a cherry leaf hiding in your hay bale and you don't see it, you feed it to your animals and then they get poisoned. 
So you do want to be sure of that as well, that it's not, um, that there's no toxic plants in the hay field and that it's not got a lot of prickly weeds in it as well. I see you, Mickey. One other thing to look for um, is the tightness of the baling twine. So you can see this bale that's older has a really nice um, tightness. It's not real loose. This side has come a little bit loose, probably just um, being moved over time, but this side is still nice and tight. This bale is actually a little bit looser than I prefer. You can see how it, it pulls up much easier, much further than this one. There are two reasons that you don't want a loosely twined bale. Reason number one is you get less bang for your buck. Um, the better the tightness is, the more tightly it's baled, the denser the hay is. So it's gonna last you longer and for the same size, you're gonna get more hay for the same size and price than one that's loosely baled. And it's also kind of annoying trying to feed the loosely baled ones because they're not as compact. So when you take a flake off, you're gonna lose a lot more on the ground. A lot more is just gonna fall off as you're transporting it and fall on the ground or get stuck in your hair and your clothes and things like that. So you do wanna be sure that they have a nice um, tightness to their baling twine. They're not giving you a really loose one that's gonna um, not give you as much value. And lastly, um, the last thing you wanna be sure of which is really more something that um, you just have to kind of trust your hay person because they're the ones who are going to be in control of this. But you don't want to get a hay that was baled while it was damp. Um, if it was rained on and then baled or if it didn't dry sufficiently and then it was baled, then you're looking at um, hay that's going to mold or potentially catch fire in your barn. And neither one of those things is good. So do find a good hay person that you can trust that you know they're not baling their hay up wet because you're gonna run into a lot of problems. A lot of barn fires have been started by wet hay um, and mold will come in the hay as well. If it doesn't catch on fire, it will mold because of the dampness. So check your bales when you get them and you're putting them up. Be sure they're not damp because that will create heat and um, you don't want that in your barn. So just check them as you're putting them up to be sure that they haven't gotten wet and they're not damp. And then you may want to, especially if um, you're getting them from someone you've never bought from before, you may want to just stick your hand in occasionally, periodically, um, to be sure that you're not feeling any heat. Because if you're feeling heat, then that's a sign that um, you may end up with some barn fire because of the hay, because it was put up wet. But yeah, so that's it. That's um, some of my tips to find a good quality hay, because hay is the basis. It's the foundation of most of your livestock's diet. So you need to find a really good quality hay. Um, but thanks for watching. I hope to see you all around next time. And you can go follow me on Facebook um, and Instagram, and you can subscribe to me here on YouTube as well. So I'll see you all next time.